Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the process of differentiating and integrating our power series. At first, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, these are already crazy enough. Do we really have to get into differentiating and integrating? Well, what you're gonna see as our previous properties that we've discussed so far, this is actually a really powerful technique. And make sure you watch to the end of the video when I talk about the power series representation of the tangent inverse of x, or the arctan function. It's beautiful, and you can see how powerful this method can be in creating power series representations of functions. To start, our setup is exactly as we described previously. We have a power series that started at centered at x equals a. Here's our description right here. And we're assuming that this power series converges and it defines the function f of x on the interval defined by the absolute value of x minus a is less than r. Again, just for terminology purposes, r is our radius of convergence. A is the center of our power series. Well, if we have that set up, then we have two statements about the differentiation and integration. And beautifully, because of the simplistic nature of the terms of our power series, the differentiation and integration is as easy as the power rule or the anti-power rule for integration. So if we have this set up, then we actually know that f is differentiable, which actually means it's also continuous. If it's differentiable, it's continuous. You remember that from our differential calculus lesson. So it's differentiable on the interval defined by this absolute value inequality statement right here. And also that the derivative of f is defined by simply taking the derivative of each of these terms. And again, all that's going on we have this k right here. If you have this polynomial term with this exponent, all we do is we take one away from that exponent and bring that k down, and that's all that we need to do in the description of our function. Again, it's still convergent, um, has a radius or interval of convergence that's same from the very beginning. And then the integration is exactly the same, but the opposite, right? The integral representation of this function right here, the power series representation, is simply that anti-power rule where we're adding one to the exponent and dividing by that exponent. One important thing I just wanna state before we move forward, this and a couple of the previous statements we've made, we haven't gone through and proved them. It's important to us that we prove our statements so you can see where they come from and that helps open up the future math that you'll see where you would be proving these statements. Though for these, this statement and a couple of the ones that you've seen and we'll see in the near future, the actual ability to prove this is outside of the scope of what we've covered so far and it would take so much learning just to get to that proof that's really not worth the time. So you can look it up if you need to, but we're not going to go and prove this statement right here, but it should ring true with your understanding of the distribution, well not distribution, but the application of differentiation to multiple terms. This feels somewhat intuitive. Importantly though, you should be thinking of like, why would I care about that? Well, my first example, you're going to see, I've done this previously with the Cauchy product property of multiplying two power series together. That actually, to find a power series for that function is a heck of a lot easier if I use this method right here. Well, surprise, surprise, I'm sure you weren't even expecting it. We're gonna go back to our known power series of one over one minus X, as described right here. This fits the bill for our setup of the differentiate and integrating. What I'm going to do now is differentiate this. Important, don't forget, and I should write this here real fast, is that I could write this f of x as one minus x to the negative one. So if I wanted to find the derivative of that, the derivative of this is negative one, one minus x now to the negative two. Important, I can't forget about um, the chain rule, so the derivative of the inside here is negative one. Those negative ones cancel, and this derivative is one over one minus x squared. And not by chance, that's exactly what we're trying to develop a power series for. So I have that f prime of x is one over one minus x squared, but this statement right here says is that f prime of x is equal to this representation or that derivative of each of these terms of this function right here. So what that means is that one over one minus x squared 
equals the power series from n equals zero to infinity of, we'll bring that n down and we get x to the n minus one. And if you're following along from the previous time we've talked about this, this looks a little bit different. What I'm going to do is expand this a little bit. We can actually um, simplify this statement a little bit or maybe just rewrite it. But um, for zero, that first co the co constant coefficient will be zero. When we plug in a one, we're gonna get to the zero power. So we just have a one right here. When I plug in a two, I'm gonna get a two right here and then x to the one. And then if I plug in a three, I'll get a three x squared, yada, yada. The important statement here is that since my first term starts at zero, I actually can do a bit more simple of a representation of this right here. I can rewrite the summation as described by this as follows. So again, this is the power series representation of one over one minus x squared. That could be the sum as n starts at zero to infinity. Um, and if n is zero, I want that first coefficient to be a one. So I'll do n plus one. And then the power relates directly to that. So zero power, one power. And so I can just write this as x to the one. And actually each of these are exactly the same. Um, I'm using this, if you're following along from the previous example, this was the representation I got. It's exactly the same. It's a heck of a lot simpler. I didn't have to expand the multiplication of these two factors right here. All I had to do was apply differentiation to this known power series representation on this interval right here. And I've, re I've gotten a power series representation of one over one minus x squared. And importantly, I just make this statement always for the interval of convergence. This is for from negative one to one or when the absolute value of x is less than one. All right, in this example, we're being asked to construct a power series for the function tangent inverse of x or the arc tangent of x. Um, this is a beautiful example to me and it's really kind of illuminates why this is useful. Um, these two techniques of either differentiating or integration. So what we're going to use here first, we know that the integral of one over one plus x squared is equal to the tangent inverse of x plus c. At this point, you might be like, oh my lord, I thought for this inverse trig function, there was no way that we were gonna relate that back to that one over one minus x power series that we've talked about so much. And this is awesome, this is beautiful, we are. That's exactly what we're going to do because of this relationship right here. It's important, we've actually already talked about this function um, and its power series. Um, so we know that one over one plus x squared can be represented by the power series from zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x to the two n. Um, and I will, after I expand this out, I'll just take a quick break and just show that again real fast. We have covered it in a previous video. But what this is right here, in its expanded form, it's an alternating series. It's one minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the six plus yada yada, alternating going up by these exponents that are powers of two, the alternating coming from this right here, this first factor. And just as a quick aside, I just wanna remind you of this fact right here. So it just comes from the property that we can use the composition of our known um, power series right here. What we're going to do is substitute negative x squared in for the x right here. When we do that, then we substitute the negative x squared in the power series statement. And then I won't show it all out, but I'll just write it down below. You'll, you'll definitely be able to see this, is that we go from zero to infinity. Um, and then I'll split this, it's a negative one times x squared. So I get this negative one to the n, that's that factor right there. And then I get the x squared to the n, which can be simplified as x to the two n. So this is the justification for this series I'm using right here. So then we have this power series representation for one over one plus x squared. And then if we look back just real quick at our statements about differentiate and integration, well, we can know then that, that the integral of this statement right here is equal to the term by term integration of this power series expansion. So if we apply the integral to this side of the equation, we can apply the integral to this side of the equation. 
Well, beautifully, on this side right here, as we previously said, the integral of this is the tan inverse of x. And then if we integrate this side, so we're, all we're doing is the anti-power rule on each of these. So I'll just write this out for a few steps real fast. This would be x to the fifth over five minus x to the seventh over seventh, yada, yada, yada. And then we need to put the plus c on one side of this equation. I'll put it right over here. So first of all, holy crap, that was kind of tricky. Again, what we did, we used using the one over one minus x power series representation. We had a representation of one over one plus x squared. But then now we can use this concept of integrating to integrate to get the tan inverse and then integrating term by term this power series to get a power series representation. Second is whenever we use integration again, I'm sure when you've gone through integral calculus, you won't forget this, but don't forget that when we do this indefinite integral, we'll always get this arbitrary C, um, but we can always can resolve it somehow. And how I'm going to resolve it here is I know the fact that when zero is plugged in for X, the output is zero. Meaning when I plug in a zero for x here and for all the x's here, this side and that side have to equal zero. Well, all of these terms that have an x in them will go to zero, meaning that the c must equal zero also for this to be true. So given that, we know we have the power series representation of the tangent inverse on the interval from negative one to one. Um, this is the expanded version, but the coolest way is to use this sigma notation for this. Um, and you can think of this sigma notation as translating this statement right here, or importantly, again, as we saw previously, is just applying the anti-power rule to this statement right here. What we'll get is negative one to the n, and then x to the 2n plus 1, so I'm adding 1 to that exponent, and dividing by 2n plus 1. Just importantly to point out, if you haven't seen this a lot, this 2n plus 1 is the way to represent odd numbers when n is an integer, and you can see that each of these, the powers and these coefficients are the same, and they're odd numbers. You could always plug in 0 here first. 0 would give me a positive value. 0 would give me an x to the 1 power, and then divided by one, that works. And then you can plug in one to verify that it all works. So what this ability to differentiate and integrate power series term by term means is that when we're looking to construct a power series, we can think about the derivative or the integral of the function that we're looking at. We can always use differentiation or integration to modify a power series to represent that function. And again, it just tickles me. And I, part of me thinks, Okay, yes, again, there's no way we're gonna relate this back to that one over one minus x. There's no way. This is an inverse trig function, but we did. By first representing one over one plus x squared, which is the derivative of the tangent inverse, but then applying integration to this, this statement right here, this function, and then term by term, this sigma statement, we got a power series representation. Importantly, I want to say here too, we always should be thinking about the endpoints. It's not always going to be important to do that, and sometimes it's very obvious. But right now, we have this on the interval from negative 1 to 1. Um, I'm going to check actually x equals negative 1 and 1. Not by chance, actually. In this case, for this alternating series, you're going to see that actually this converges at the endpoints. So I've plugged negative one and one in for x into my power series here. Um, and now I just have a normal infinite c series. Um, in this case, it's one raised to what well, doesn't matter any power. But this is going to revert to is just this alternating sequence. And I'm going to rewrite this a little bit just to make it really clear for me. So this is negative one to the end. That's the alternating part. And I have these terms described by 2n plus 1. In the second case right here, I have negative 1 raised to an odd exponent. I'm going to take that factor of negative 1, and I'm just going to uh, pull it out of the summation right here. It actually won't um, influence the actual um, convergence or divergence of this series. Um, so I'll get negative one um, to the end right here. I could have actually applied that negative one to this, but it doesn't matter. It's the same either way. Uh, I get two n plus one right here. And importantly, these are both alternating series and I won't rewrite that theorem or the statements about these. But if I look at these alternating series, as n increases, 
This term described here, the non-alternating part, this we call this like the A sub N piece right here. This is going to be decreasing as this denominator grows. So it's non-increasing. And if we take the limit of this as n goes to infinity, it goes to zero. So because it's an alternating series, that test says both of these actually must converge, meaning that negative one and one are also in the interval of convergence here. And so this is true um, for the absolute value of x is less than or equal to one, or from negative one, including negative one, all the way to one and including one.